yeah, that, the sausage patty was the end of us. Yeah. <laughs> like and unsubscribe. <laughs>
to do both and I ended up but I only had an XC bike so I pretty much just ended up doing cross country races and was lucky and was really good at it and just wanted to ride more and more and more and the New Zealand the New Zealand racing scene has been so good for so long so yeah I remember racing the summer circuits. Why do I like racing? It just forces you to push yourself I guess and I think I've learnt from racing for so long that I used to race for the result like oh, I always wanted to win I always wanted to be on the top but Definitely what I've learned over the years is like, and it's why I still enjoy it now is it gives you that excuse to push yourself properly. And I'm more just in a weird way, like race myself. So there's this whole really interesting debate of like evaluating performance versus results. So yeah, now I just race because it forces you to bring the best out of yourself. It's, it's rad. I got hooked to racing when I was at high school and I remember um, I actually read this training like, book on how to train. And it was, funnily enough, I ended up going to uni later and studying like exercise physiology and pres prescription. And that was one of the textbooks. And I read that when I was about 15. And I remember writing my own training plans and things as a high school kid. And yeah, eventually like I won, I don't know, like the under 15 and under 17 national titles in New Zealand as a junior. And then um, in the under 19s went to world champs for New Zealand. Yeah, made the New Zealand junior team, um, which was awesome. So went to a couple of world cups and a few and world champs. Got like a, I think I got like 22nd at my first junior world cup ever. So it was like, yeah, that was awesome. Um, just, and it's just so funny. Like I was writing my own training plans at the time and you know, I kind of had no idea what I was doing. It was pretty much just like, okay, let's just go out and ride and ride and ride some more and also whatever I felt like like even though there was a plan it was still just pretty pretty relaxed and I think that was like the key to me just like keep keeping going through high school and then post school and and still riding now because I remember a lot of the dudes who we were racing with at the time like hardly any of them still ride anymore because you know it's quite a full-on scene and like they tra they're training really really hard and they just got burnt out so I think it's only me and like Sammy Shaw now who we raced against we raced against a lot and we're still best mates, so that's rad. And yeah, I remember in the juniors actually back in New Zealand, um, yeah, Anton, Anton Cooper was like a year behind us. Um, and I, there's, I think maybe the biggest victory I've ever proud of where I've, there's a podium of me, um, Horse, Nick Bygate, he's a legend in second, and then third was Anton. Um, but that was like the under 15 national champs and I think Anton might have been like 11 or 12 at the time. So I'm still gonna claim it. Thanks, Anton, mate. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been racing on the like the EWS scene since kind of 2015, and pretty much something's always gone wrong, like whether it's me or the bike. Like, there's so many mistakes, and yeah, there's so much to learn on the EWS. Like, it's it's not as easy as just turning up and racing. So, the worst experience would have to be in Ainza in 2018. Me and Charlie Murray had pretty much decided to go over to the last two rounds of the EWS about three weeks before they actually were racing. So we bought the cheapest flights to Europe from New Zealand that we could. We were like, ah, you know, ah, it ended up in Switzerland. Switzerland's, yeah, we've got to be to Spain. That's, that's pretty close, we'll make it work. So we flew into Switzerland, got off the plane after two days and Sammy Shaw picked us up in his big blue transit van. We're like, cool, we'll just tent, sleep in the van, it'll be super cheap. But it was still a 12 hour drive from <laughs> Switzerland to Spain. And with Sam had this awesome, three-seater van which was going to be perfect he'd been living in it for the summer in Europe except he turned up with another person Tom and he turned out to be our team manager except what that meant he is that the four of us one of us would always have to take a turn in the back in the bed when we were driving and we thought Charlie and I were like, yeah man, this is awesome because <laughs> we'll have a sleep we've been flying for two days it'd be awesome except when you're driving on the highways over to Spain for 12 hours it's super hot because the bed's like a foot from the roof so you're there like sweating in your jocks <laughs> and like this is the worst experience ever in the dark so anyway that was a great warm-up um to lead then we were maybe i think we arrived at the race venue like four days before and because we we're doing it on the cheap the, the spaniards put on this, <laughs> this sausage party and there was like a kilometer long sausage that they cooked in the courtyard of the castle and so we thought it was an awesome idea, like, sweet, this is us fed for like the next few days. So we took so much of the sausage. I'm pretty sure we just left it like in the van throughout the day, just heating up in these super hot Spanish days. So funnily enough, we got food poisoning, I'm pretty sure. 
But what that meant is that on the race day, it was another like 30 plus degree day and we took off, you know, I think it was like a decent thousand meter climb or so to start with. Dropped into the first stage, that was okay. And then I got to the food station at the bottom of that next stage and I was like, ah, oh, I feel pretty average. <laughs> like I can't really eat anything. So I tried to just buff as much as I could. Climb back up like another 800 meters to the top of stage two, just like no energy. I'm like, oh man, this sucks. I've come all this way. I'm just gonna keep pushing through. It just made my start time, like race down the stage, just spewed up in my helmet mid-stage. I'm like, what is going on here? Like in a full face helmet, got to the bottom, like ripped my helmet off. And then I'm just like on the side of the track. And I think Charlie was bes behind us and he came down with like a broken derailleur. So I'm trying to, and Charlie and I are like at the bottom of the stage, I'm trying to fix his derailleur, like not trying to spew up on his bike. And Charlie's like trying to fix his bike. And I remember Chris Ball came over and he's like, you guys all good? And we're like, yeah, mate, <laughs> yeah, we're good, we're good. So we kept going, I got to the food station. I was like, okay, I'll just drink whatever I can. I just had like about a liter of Coca-Cola and like just, that was the only thing I could keep down. So I kept going to the third stage and I was like, sweet, we're just gonna make our way down this valley to the river. And I'll be like, oh man, okay, I'm gonna have a swim in the river, I'll chill out, it'll be good. But as the valley got lower and lower, the trees got less and less and it just was like white baking rock. And I made it down the third stage just so, so slow. I could barely like kind of hold on. I was like, okay, the fourth stage, like it's just a minute long, we'll get there. And I like literally walked to the um, last stage. I was like, okay, sweet, I've made it. I'm here, got to it and just passed out and was like eyes rolling back, like spewing up. It was the scariest. At that moment, I was like, oh no, I've like totally lost control. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and um, I remember, I remember Wolfie was over me, just like fanning me saying, I'm your biggest fan, Tom, I'm your biggest fan. And then I just had to get carried. I just couldn't do anything. And I knew shit had hit the fan when Sam Shaw came over the, <laughs> over the Spanish radio of the medics because it was all this Spanish like thing and then I hear oh my I need I need a I need an ambulance for my mate I'm like oh no <laughs> I've really cooked this and ended up getting stretched past like the whole pro field and I think all I could say was gracias like I said it like 200 times like gracias gracias and anyway they took us to hospital and um scanned like did an x-ray of my stomach and things because I like spewing up blood by this point and uh I've got this great x-ray where I had these bib shorts on and I had a brake pad in either side of the bib. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so I've got like ribs, spine, hips, and then these two perfect brake pads. It's so good. But then yeah, once we chilled out and they just kind of discharged us out of the hospital, they're like, sweet, you're good. And I'm just left there kind of standing with like no top, like my shorts from where I was racing in and like a bag of some like dirty clothes. And luckily I had like charge my phone in the hospital. It's like, can someone come pick me up? Cause I'm 50 k's away from the race. So yeah, that would be to conclude probably my worst racing experience. <laughs> I guess the, the ax on my XC World Cup career in, in Cairns at the, yeah, Cairns at the World Cup um, in 2014. Um, I just absolutely cooked going into this rock garden. And yeah, there's nothing like we're still riding with our seats up. I don't even, I can't even do that anymore. So I look at this video now and like, yeah, the seat's way up my ass and I just get catapulted into this rock garden and yeah, just smoke my head, smoke my shoulder, broke, so yeah, smoke my wrist. Um, yeah, had a, uh, yeah, I had, I had like a wrist surgery and, and broken collarbone, but the biggest one was the head injury. Like I slept for 16 hours a day for six weeks. Like it was, yeah, it was full on, so. After that big crash in Cairns, I'd put so much effort into training and like working two jobs while I was at uni to like save up for that kind of work. And I was just so gutted that it all just like blew out um, and it was for, for nothing. So now I really just, I ride a lot for fun. And like, I think my type of fun is not other people's type of fun. I have a bit of a, I love just like a big hard mission. And if I'm out by myself, I'm always, I like, always find myself smoked at the top of a hill. So I'm always going hard by myself, but I have no no structured training right now. Like, um, I think it's super important for me to like, for, to, to mentally be there. Like physically, I know that I'll be fit because I just, I like to ride so much and the type of riding I do will get me fit and I'm not doing the big peaks for races like a pro pro athlete would be doing. Um, but mentally, like it's super important I've learned to like switch off in the off season and 
my that's what winters in Canada have actually taught me is that like you don't ride your bike for two months like right now I just all I want to do after not riding my bike for two months is just ride so hard so that's super important to do. take a take a step away like you've got to someone's always said you got to switch off to switch on I think like aside from racing like there's so many other things you can do with biking that I'm proud of like organizing the three peaks enduro starting like helping start that event is something I'm super proud of and the other thing is like Everesting from last year I just kind of decided to challenge myself and I've seen people doing like the Everesting on the road and I was like well, that looks pretty hard and then I was just kind of at home and I did like a pretty big ride of like what I thought could be an Everesting course but I wanted to call like a proper Everesting so go up a go up a mountain climb and then come down a mountain bike track and then I gave up on the idea pretty quickly because I was like oh my god that's so that's so hard I can't can't do that and I called a mate up Matty Graham who's actually one of my old coaches back in New Zealand and he's like dude if you can do you know eight or nine hours you'll be fine just but and he said he said to me everything is temporary I'm like wait what do you mean he's like yeah the the, the times don't last forever and the good times don't last forever I'm like that actually makes sense in a weird kind of way um and so yeah then I just gave it a crack started I was like <laughs> no preparation really I just decided maybe on like the Wednesday I was oh, okay I'll do it this weekend I'll, I'll commit to this weekend Friday afternoon like I kind of just like skived off work and was running around picking up lights night lights from my mates because I decided to start at 1am on Saturday morning up from on the North Shore and I figured if I did 20 hours it would take me to do the 8,800 meters and ride like the mountain bike tracks down then I'd be done by 9 p.m. and while it was still light but what ended up happening I finished actually like 1 a.m. the following morning because I blew out because I was eating potatoes and uh, <laughs> a dodgy tuna bacon pasta salad which I suspect really really set things off <laughs> but yeah that was a, that's something I'm proud of like it doesn't you don't have to you don't have to race all the time to to aim for something or be stoked and push yourself so Oh, my favorite people to ride with. Just anyone who likes to laugh and always say yes. <laughs> like, I don't know, I've got a really good group of mates over here in Canada who I love to do big missions with because we know we will support each other when it hits the fan, but we'll always push each other like it always. And not in like a, not in a pissing contest kind of way. It's more just like a, you know, you can do it. Like, let's just do it. And whether it's like a big jump or drop or, you know, another, climb or up to another mountain like that's that's the type of people I like to ride with who are always up for it and then yeah I like to have a drink afterwards too that was fun <laughs> have a beer afterwards but uh yeah what was I doing before I was a pink bike presenter I was working for a really cool Kiwi company actually over here called Zero um and yeah they, they were awesome I was really lucky to you know it's scary moving to a new country and to find a job with a like a New Zealand company that shares that shares that goal so I was doing sales for them um but you know pretty much I was always just working to ride like yeah <laughs> just every second I wasn't working was always trying to like what's the next ride what's the next event so yeah a big a big step into the pink bike world was throwing my hat in the ring for the um, pink bike academy and just super lucky to get that um, opportunity like just you know, there's so many riders around the world who applied for that and I was lucky enough to be able to go during the pandemic because it was in, in Canada. Yeah, got, got to know the Pink Bike team and kind of got to know a bit more of the North American media world. Um, so yeah, got to know Jason and Brian and the rest of the Pink Bike team a bit better and we kept talking and then we filmed something at the end of last year and yeah, what really set it for me was, you know, they want to grow the tent of mountain biking and like what they what that means to me is you take people that ride mountain bikes and turn them into mountain bikers and like to me that like makes sense and I don't know we're so lucky to be mountain bikers and the things that it allows us to do and the experiences to have that like the more people the better and this is like the best way that I can do that so it's I was like yeah and they also were like just I was kind of worried that they wanted you know like a North American flavored person they're like no be yourself so <laughs> I was just like okay sweet you said it <laughs> you might regret it no <laughs> yeah, cut that <laughs> it's definitely been a massive change like going from like the cross-country racer piece through to like 
trying to race the EWS with a full-time job and then now like fully submerged in the mountain bike world. It's, it's awesome. I'm still learning so much. I definitely find it scary like putting myself out there to such a big audience. Like that's definitely been like something that was on my mind and something that's, that is definitely scary. Like I love interacting with a group of people and one-on-one -on -one because you can always kind of engage with them slightly differently and and make sure that they're getting stoked. So yeah, that's definitely the hardest, like the scariest part of it for sure. I think the favorite part about working with Pink Bikes so far is actually seeing people like engage with the videos and they go riding because of it. Like I think that's a real challenge that we've got. Like we've, we're making content for people to watch, but I don't want them just to watch and watch and watch and watch. I want them to watch and then get the get out and get riding. Like that's yeah, that's like success and for me. So yeah. yeah. What do I want from 2021? Like I'd love to be able to get to some races, uh, like EWS races safely and you know, so long as it's not putting stress on anywhere that we don't need to put stress on. Um, so that's always going to be a challenge and we'll see how that unfolds. Dream result would be going to all the EWS races and getting to cover them and produce kind of some like behind the scenes content and race as well and kind of take people on that journey behind and I know I'd love to also just meet more and more people um, like from people who are beginner riders right through to like EWS riders and privateers and kind of just share people's stories because I think that's what people engage with and that's what I engage with like if I hear a good story then that motivates me to get out riding and do better so if we can as a team like produce videos and stuff that gets people pumped to do that and that'd be awesome whether it's here in BC or around the world that'd be rad. I'd tell people if they're wanting to like level up their writing um, that just have fun with it don't try force it and take your time like you're not going to be Sam Hill overnight like it doesn't happen like that so just consistency a little bit often yeah and just just surround yourself with good people too because you, you know, you can push yourself as much as you like, which is awesome and you need to do that, but just feed off other positive people and that, that would be a, a huge part. Whether you're, yeah, EWS world champ or it's your first time biking, just get yourself around good, fun people, yeah.